Andy, it's Nick. Um, calling you from Iceland. Um, here's the thing. I've been here for two days, and I've made the executive decision. I'm never coming back. I'm quitting the podcast forever. I stepped off the plane in Reykjavik. They saw my flowing red beard and mistook me for Eric the Red. I am a Viking god to them. I'm being highly revered by everyone here, as far as I can tell. People are bringing me food and wine and taking care of me. They think I'm important. So... I won't be coming back. Thanks for everything. I hope everything goes well. I hope the sit-ins are going well. I think you're in the 50s now or something like that. Uh, so I just want to call you and give you a heads up. I won't be coming back to America. Thanks for everything. Okay, Andy. Um, uh, just calling you back. Things have changed. Um, you were right. It's pretty expensive here. Like, I kind of underestimated how much everything costs, and uh, I'm running low on funds. I was wondering if you could advance me for uh, next week's salary plus maybe another cup, like 2K. I know you got it right now. You've been playing festivals all over the country. I see your crowds, okay? I know you have the money, man. Just send it, dude. Just hit me on Venmo. The Wi-Fi here is pretty good, man. So just can you send me like, I don't know, three grand? I don't know, maybe four grand. Honestly, I might need five grand to get through the week. And then I'm definitely coming back now. Apparently, I was wrong about the Viking thing, and they were just being nice because they work here. And uh, they were a flight attendant, and um, so things aren't going as good as I thought. And so if you could just get that money to me, if you, I really need it by the end of the day. If anything, by lunch, if you can do that. Okay, uh, have a good day. I'll see you next week for work again. There you go. That's that synchronicity. Is that a word? Synchronicity. Synchronicity. <laughs> Synchronicity. Synchronicity. And we're back. Andy Frasco's World Saving Podcast. I'm Andy Frasco. How we doing? How's our heads? How's our minds? We got my um, my second man in charge, my vice president, fucking Sean Eccles. I'm hey. Sean. Hey, buddy. Wow. We never get to hang out in Denver when uh, when we're... Yeah, but, I mean, we kind of did on 4th of July there that for was a nice. second. Yeah. yeah. We're both depleted and like, yeah. you know, empty shells of a man. <laughs> Trying to, hey. trying to impress the ladies in our life. Nice weekend I'm here. <laughs> being, being present. We're being present. Oh, <laughs> shit. It's so hard to sleep when we're not on the road. Do you sleep better on the road or off the road? I mean, you're kind of forced to sleep on the road when you can because, yeah. you know, you get those little disco naps on planes or whatever you, you fight for and then you're so tired that you do actually sleep. But I'm at home, I think too much. And like yeah. You're off your routine and you're not in gig mode. Uh, so it's like, okay, we're re I'm just waking up at 9 p.m. on the road. And then it's like, oh, uh, let's go to bed at 9 p.m. <laughs> Shit doesn't fucking no, work. No, it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> and it takes too long. To Does acclimate. Toby get pissed? No, but she's just early riser and uh, goes to bed earlier. Do you so, have to lay in bed with her? Or can you like watch TV? Yeah, or? for sure. But like usually the, the, as it goes, if you turn your screen off, yeah. you get it all dark, fall asleep eventually. How many edibles do you have to eat? Unlike my wife, I can eat 10 to 20 or, you know, 50 if I'm feeling crazy. Yeah. You know? and 50 milligrams? 50 fucks me up and it's like, it's fun. It's like peel yourself off the couch and it's a little little scary too. It's like, whoa. Have that. you uh, been eating those dieting gummies? I have. They're my favorite. Yeah? Yeah, they taste the best. And like, yeah, they're good. You can manage those. Like on planes, we've been eating those. And yeah. It's a killer. I love it. What yeah. about the... I've, I've been rocking them before I go to bed now. Although... What? <laughs> the other the other morning we were flying somewhere. What? We had two flights. I ate one on the first flight, and I ate a second one, and I had a little panic attack. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, I was like sweating my ass off, and everything's like, oh man, I ate too many. You know, yeah, it, didn't, it was like ten minutes of hell. But and we stayed up all night. Sure, yeah. So you're like, yeah, it's you're crazy. You out, feel like a crazy person. I hate that. That's remember when we were in, um, we were going to China. And we ate those big you old... Got, yeah, you had a fucking panic attack. I had attack. a panic attack. I was Those crying. were like the first edibles ever. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's like fit, too strong. Yeah, I fought through that one too. I was like, okay, man, you're cool. You're, you're just, sweating. You're just high. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful. You got to know You got to know your, your percentage of milligram and all that shit. Yeah. You know? That's why I like the dialed in. So grab some dialed in gummies. Mm, and they're so tasty. They are good. They're fucking great. And they're hard to get. I mean, they Colorado, they sell out all the time. Proof's in the pudding there, man. Proof's in the fucking pudding. So grab yourself some dialed in gummies mm. if you're in the Colorado area. Um, what You got a busy week this week? Yeah, I have a huge, busy week. Playing all over Denver. Playing what? up at Vail, Shakedown with Corey Montgomery. Playing at Washington Park Grill, doing that thing. I might be playing with Little Feet next Friday. When? They're playing at Fiddler's Green. Let's fucking go! I'm going to go hang out 
And they usually when I go hang out, those guys are like, dude, don't yeah, talk. Bring it. your hip, bro. And it's like, so we go. Fred's got to let you. Fred and Bill, Bill's, those guys at summer camp were amazing. That was so cool. That was that, well, you've always, you've opened for Little Feet a bunch. Whole bunch. I met Fred, like, at a festival that Humphreys McGee headlined in, like, 2003 in Arkansas called The Great Unknown. And the promoter's like, hey, man, guitar player from Little Feet's sitting right over there, and nobody's talking to him or having him sit in. So I, I'd heard of them. I'd heard Waiting for Columbus, their super their yeah. badass album, like, a couple times, and I thought it was dope. So he started talking and been friends ever since. And, yeah. Fucking sick. He's, he's, um, he's, he, his stories are unbelievable. Yeah. He played with Bob Dylan Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. He was on Sonny and Cher show and all the TV shows in the 70s. And You're he, slowly becoming that type of legend, too. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's Never go. stop. Let's fucking go. <laughs> let's go. Train don't stop. Our boy don't stop. Bro. I mean, <laughs> while you're here, let's talk about all of your fucking side projects you got. You got Tongue Hammer. Tongue Hammer coming soon. So go like our page on Instagram. It's Tongue Hammer. Once we reach 500 followers, we're at two right now. Okay. We have a fucking badass rock video. So okay. It's, so my wife's in it. It's crazy. It's I swear to God, it's like a '90s rock video. It's Tell, like, this is kind of like an all-star band. Yeah, man, that's all coming together, and we have a video. We're recording it color red, Sick. just putting it together, and we're gonna. It's uh, it's kind of some heavier shit. Are you thankful you moved to Denver? I am the most thankful. Yeah, that we moved to Denver. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I said it yesterday. I don't know if you or two days ago here. when I was at um, High Sierra, but we'll talk about that too. But you're, it's really true. Like I I moved out here because I saw like how dope you were doing out here. I've, I'm better than I've done anywhere else. Yeah. And there's music. I mean, it's beautiful out here. I'm sold. What about like uh, when you go back to Springfield, Missouri? Well, do they, do they fucking, do they resent you now? Cause you haven't came back or what? No, I mean, most people have moved on. I mean, who knows? Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, and the music scene is totally different and everything. I've right. got a handful of friends I still see, you know, the old band and everything. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. Everybody. You're a different man a different than man. you were. Other people are different people. Some people are still at the same happy hour, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Fucking nine years ago now. Uh, isn't that crazy? In October, that's nine years. Time's so flying. How crazy. long have we been together? 13, 12 years? Yes. Yeah, I think I met you in, at nine or 2000, 2009 or 2010. Yeah. Something like that. It was that so Wednesday. Like we always, I always see a memory on Facebook. It's like, oh, that's how long. I've been Doug together. in the solar panels. I opened for you guys and then. Yep. He said. My buddy Andy needs a gig, man. I was like, ah, it's Wednesday night. And he goes, he doesn't want any money. I was like, sign him up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So that's how I met My you. My guy. You know, you had the right price. Yeah. Free. <laughs> People don't know. Sean does solo acts. He does a solo show. He probably does three or four nights a week solo shows. When I'm home. Yeah. It's so hard to entertain someone solo. Oh, you man. and Steve Poltz are the only guys, and John Cody. I have nothing on Steve Poltz. That was unbelievable at High Sierra. Like, that's something else. Wasn't High Sierra playing music? fucking magical? Yes, it was. The vibe there, pretty, pretty mad. Peach had its, had, had its own vibe, which was insanity and crazy. And then High Sierra, I don't know, man, there was something special. Well, we, like, we kind of expected. Opening, yeah, but I think open, playing before Steve Poltz. That fired us Hyped up, Hyped us up. Because he was, he, I don't know, man. He did something I've never seen before. And yeah, exactly. Like, he was just connected in a fucking crazy way. Shout out to Steve Poltz, yeah. one of the goats. The we man. wrote a song, our new album, we're going to have, we wrote a song together. Yeah. Me, Sean, and Steve called. And Paul McDonald. And Paul McDonald called High on Our Own Supply. Sure fucking did. <laughs> let's go. Woo, that's a good one. I'm excited. I love it. I think it's going to kill. He said, let's write an opener. Like a banger, yeah. <laughs> we wrote a banger. So Sean's here because we're um, we're in the process of making a new record. That's right. And we have he he put he brought a couple songs to the palette, and it's just so and it's so hard to write when we're always so fucking busy. Yeah, but I mean, you've taught me just to get in there and start doing it, and you know, start sautéing them onions. Yeah, and if it starts cooking, you're, you're off to the cooking. races. Like the one we wrote with Steve and Paul, forty five minutes, the whole thing was done. <laughs> that was so fast. Why but, do we overthink songwriting? I think I do personally. I do that when I do it alone. I overthink shit, right? Way more. But when you have somebody to instantly bounce on, we've written a bunch of shit together now. So it's like, okay, is that cool? No. Okay, what else are we gonna do? Or yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. And it's just quicker to get to it. But like, we gotta just trust our musicianship now these days. Yeah, and, like, and each other's opinions. And each other. And it's like, that's hey, man, thing you, too. I wouldn't tell you it's not cool if it's not cool. Yeah. You know. Or, or like, you know, the other way around. Or like getting offended if we don't like something. That's with the, the get over all that shit. Yeah. And get over doing it yourself because you want it to be yours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And What's get, the we point? All, yeah, because we're not making money. Fucking yeah, albums. we're not no fucking way. Yeah, we, <laughs> so might. we might as well write the best songs we can together. Yeah, and we're making money. We split it up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's like yeah. it's uh, 
everyone thinks like, oh, we want this. It's like a kind of a great, that's why I learned in Nashville. Like a lot of these dudes, that's why we have Wheeler Walker Jr. on the show. He's totally yeah. anti-Nashville. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he fucking hates the process of Nashville. And you're going to hear it in the I interview. It's yeah. fucking insane. That's funny. But um, I learned that pro. Like everyone's just trying to get their cut. Yeah, if, if that's a different thing there. Instead of just or just like, oh yeah, you writing? Can I get in? Yeah, yeah. Man, it's like that. Oh god, can I get my five and a half percent? Yeah. Oh, I wrote that one word. Here's seventeen percent. How about eighteen? Yeah. How about eighteen? <laughs> but um, you know that's the Where's way the, the three game. Syllable word, man. No, just, I, I don't know. Well, it's like we grew up being a lot. We grew up like all we know is how to entertain people live. Like we, right. I mean, we wrote songs because sure. we had to, but it wasn't like our business. We didn't think we we're gonna make money off yeah, songs exactly and still don't still don't yeah <laughs> but i mean yeah i don't know i think in like that thing about being defensive writing it and that's the different different than the nashville thing is like we know now when we write with people that you know we're friends with and we love and you get i mean like it's quick results and yeah you know, everybody reads the room right like the thing with paul and steve was right. so fast it was crazy yeah and it was fun as shit we were laughing our yeah. asses off writing that song yeah we gotta take that philosophy when we go and start cooking with the band yeah, for sure. I think, and I've, I've taken that around with like Robbie Peoples and Corey Montgomery. When I go right with those guys, I take our process to them and be like, yeah. whatever, just throw it out there. Best idea wins. Go, go, go. And yeah. always get results that way. And, and like, it's yeah, fun. don't get your feelings hurt, you know? It's like kind of like a fun competitiveness. Like, oh, yeah, I wrote that cool verse. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. It's like, fuck. Just like, I've, the music industry sometimes is just like so catty. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like, I guess you want to be the artist. But that's mine. Yeah. Because I created it. No, don't help me. Yeah. It's so <laughs> yeah. fucked up. Yeah. It's, it's like I'd, like my song today. Yeah. Like back then, I was seven years ago, I'd be like, I'm not going to play this for Andy Frasco until I'm done with it. Yeah. Now it's like, I got a chorus. Yeah. And you're like, dude, ditch that. And like, cool. Let's, yeah, let's ditch that chord thing and just, you know, what we're talking right. about. Whatever. It's totally cool. Are you like, are you comfortable now to start right, or start playing like original songs during your solo set? It's like, who gives a shit some of those? That's yeah. what that is because you're playing like a beer garden. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like, <laughs> I'm not going to get into my feelings there. But. What's the most depressing <laughs> gig, solo gig? I did a baby sh or a wedding shower once. That was a long time ago. I don't know if that was dep more depressing or just weird. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like instrumental. While girls are impressing each other with presents. How do you get, know, how do you get gigs. out of the mind state of like after like playing? for 10,000 people at Peach Fest and then playing a gig and I know I know I'm not working at a restaurant yeah fuck it yeah. let's go <laughs> <laughs> let's I'm, go I'm, drink, I'm still having a beer I'm like okay this do you ever do you ever get like when you're like super hungover and you get to that gig that I remember like it was what two weeks ago we stayed up all night because we had a 6 a.m. flight and you know our show ended at 4 and you're like oh, I gotta play at noon yeah and then I gotta play at 5 yeah the next day it's rough and i had no i lost my voice and shit you ever just cry <laughs> no <laughs> <Stage>. like, I, <laughs> <laughs> i'd cry i'd be like <laughs> it's not I'm yeah tired. i don't know maybe that might even work for the tip jar at that point <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> so i just told me that i had to fly so early <laughs> sympathy tips. my dopamine no, i think i just get like fucking angry about it but uh -oh. working on that yeah, you are. You feel like getting better. How's therapy doing? It's great, man. Yeah, yeah it really it helps. It helps the shit, load. Yeah, I'm just getting you know you feeling better. Keep the beast at, at ease here. I know you. It's like don't make Hulk mad. Yeah, you haven't <laughs> really gone. I don't know. You keep it in pretty well, but you I just, don't. Yeah, I just, you I'm an outward, shit. outward guy in every way. Like, yeah, excited. But, yeah. Know, when I get fired up, I get fired up too. But because like also breathing. like me and you have the same. Uh, we're just passionate. Yeah. To and a fault. To yeah. a fault. Yeah. And it always fucks me up whenever, because I know it fucks you up when we play Dream. And like that last line, it's like it's such our life. And like I try to not let it, and it's like it just hits me hard. We, we cry it's every cool. time we do yeah, it. Yeah, and it's like, wait, a, thanks for writing that fucking Let's song. Because it's like, that shit is our life. It that is, is man. completely our life. And it's like, it, it's relevant to right now and what's happening with yeah. us. And it, it, this shit moves me. It's cool. Living I, on the road. I, I, I invite that. Those emotional feelings, it feels good too. Yeah. Just let that shit out. Yeah, it's good. Living on the road. That's why you should sign up for Repsy.com. That's right. Living on a prayer, living on the road. <laughs> Repsy. Repsy.com. If you got a band, if you got a wedding, if you're a wedding planner, if you're an independent venue. If you're in a Bon Jovi cover band. If you're in a fucking Bon Jovi cover band, <laughs> sign up for Repsy.com. They will get you gigs. It does help. And it's going to help your agent because your agent, I just had a meeting when Bongiorno came to our, shout out to Bongiorno one more time, the best agent on the planet. Our guy. Stud. A fucking stud. 
was talking to him at Pete's Fest. He showed up and so I didn't know he was going to show up. And he shows up. And he's like, you know, next year, it's, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. Cannibalism. Everyone wants a tour for the next year and a half. And the ticket sales are going to be shit. So you might as well get as many gigs as you possible. Do the Sean Eccles method. Get gigs solo. Get gigs with a band. Get gigs with your side band. Get gigs. Sean Eccles. Keep gigging. Just play gigs. Just play gigs. Take all of them. Take all of them. And that's Never why know. you should sign up for Repsy. That's right, Repsy. All right, we got a big week. We got a big, we'll clap up the Repsy too. We got a big week, Sean. We only got one show this week. Well, you have 20,000, but next weekend when this comes out, we play the workout. Oh, that's going to be Thornville, good. In Thornville, Ohio. And then Cobblestone Live. Cobblestone and, and Buffalo. <sighs> Watch out, Buffalo. Fuck. Every time I go, I have to take a deep breath every time I go to Buffalo because- They might throw you through a fucking table. Yeah, they might throw me through a goddamn <laughs> table. <laughs> and they just killer. start, I think they are the, they, them and Charleston, uh, they party the hardest of, out of anyone I've ever had to deal with. I don't, I'm not arguing that. It's you can't argue. places are, they go hard as fuck. I, Bo, you're from Buffalo. What, why are they so dangerous with their alcoholism? Just look at Bo. I mean, that's- it's yeah, 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 I mean, cold, nothing to do, he says. I Shout bet, out to that. <laughs> I bet Alaskans rage. I bet Alaskans <laughs> just fucking get belligerent. Um, but yeah, we got a big week ahead of us. We have Wheeler Walker Jr. This guy's the shit. You ready for this one? I covered it. That yeah, fuck we're you playing. We, we played it. It was great. We, we, remember when we just did things just to make us laugh? Now we have to do it because it, a potential will make us money. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, still trying to. Why don't we? Why, why can't we just like you know? Fuck. I was. You just, get better shit if you're just trying to make each other laugh, anyways. So. I know. That's what we got to focus on. Just have remember fun. That. Remember we got to remember that this. We need to have fun with this. Process. I think we need to. When we write with the band, we need to write some fucking couple more dirty songs. It's been a I'm minute down. Since, you know, it's been a minute. Shook the shook the flag. Yeah, we might as well let them flag. know that we're still freaky. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean, you want to do a motivational speech? You got anything in the tank today? You know, just get out there and do every gig you can. Yeah. Just take every gig. Just take every gig. You know, you play a brunch gig, and then you do a rehearsal, and then you go do a late night gig, and you wake up and you do that shit again. Get out there, because you never know if you're not going to have a gig to do. That's, God, motherfucking Teresa of the music scene. This man is the hardest working guy. If it, You know, don't take it from me. <laughs> I, I I fill my time with all these other obstacles. This guy goes straight to music, nothing but music, and he's making it work. So guys, there's hope. Just fucking do it. You know, it's gonna give you cataracts. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> give you bad knees, and bad cataracts. knees and cataracts, and maybe uh, a couple bruises in your liver. But mm. at, you know, when it's, worth it's all it. said and done, you happy being I'm a musician? So happy. I'm happier than I've ever been. You could have. Done. You could have gave up. I could have still been working at the restaurant. You could have been still working at the restaurant, living in Springfield. But you followed your dreams. Follow your dreams, people. Never say no. Never lay down. Never surrender. <laughs> get out of. <laughs> All right. Let's go write that song. Let's yep. try to hit so we could get out of it. Let's let's try to like have some mailbox money. Let's bang out a hit. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Enjoy Willow Walker while we try to bang out a hit. Bye. Cool. Hey, Wheeler. How you doing, buddy? What's up, Andy, right? Yeah, it's Andy. How you doing? How are you, man? I'm happy to be on the podcast. Thanks for doing this. I don't say, I don't say yes to a lot of podcasts, but um, you want to hear my uh, requirements for podcasts? Yes, sir. Um, is it huge? I don't know. If they tell me it's huge, I'll go to it. But if, and I'm not going to be rude to you, but I, I had, I'll be honest, I'd never heard of you. Uh-huh. And they said... They showed me some of the people been on that trader, Bert Kreischer, uh-huh. a couple other musicians who weren't bad. Go, uh-huh. This guy's legit. I go, I don't know if I want to do it. And then my manager says, you can do it from your house. Book it. <laughs> what, how that's, is- that's the, that's, that's the Wheeler podcast rule. What, why, why do you think uh Bert's a trader? Give me that. Oh, he just, he was in Nashville and I was supposed to do his podcast. And then I told the story on your mom's house and he, uh, I was supposed to come by his uh, tour bus and do his podcast. And uh, then he, I got a call saying he was busy. It turns out him being busy was doing another podcast for like eight hours. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, I, Bert's one of my friends. He's, uh, he loves promotion. He's real. Well, what's, what was funny. So it was this podcast called Bussing with the Boys. I did the podcast too because it's in Nashville. Oh, yeah. He said he had stores. to cancel because he had shit to do. And I get, I get that he's, He's got shit to promote too, but, and I made fun of him on 
with Segura on his podcast, but it was like, so I'm waiting for my busting with the boys episode to air. I see. I did. I did the podcast. And then the next week I see Bert Kreischer part one. And then next week after that, Bert Kreischer part two. So he was there long enough for two fucking episodes. He canceled on me to sit in a, to bus with the boys for fucking 12 hours. And there's no fucking loyalty anymore. Wheeler. What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> You know I'm what? with you, man. You grew up in Kentucky? Is that what's your vibe? Yeah, yeah I'm from Kentucky. Where are you from, man? I'm fr- I grew up in LA. I live in Denver now. Oh, why'd you choose Denver? Because I was I decided that um LA is just a bunch of bullshit chasing the rabbit's tail type of artists who don't really have an identity. So I looked at your shit a little bit. So you're a musician. I'm a musician, yeah. And um I've been doing Is been, your like if I were if I were to search your shit, would it be under your name or yeah. is there a band? Andy Frasco, yeah. Right, we, cool. We've been doing two hundred and fifty shows a year for the last fifteen years. We're Well, I'm pushing thirty this year. I don't know if <laughs> yeah. you told me if, if if you told me thirty five, I'd say I couldn't do it. So I don't know how you do two fifty. But well, let's talk about the music first. You, it seems like you really hate country. So why did you have an no, alter I, ego? Well, th- but th- but that's the thing is I love country and I hate what these fuckers have done with it. Yeah. So I was like, wouldn't I be the world's tallest midget if I played actual country? Right. And not to mention a fucking dude who in this era of streaming and being able to upload shit yourself, I fucking didn't censor myself and said it was actually on my fucking mind. Right. Um, wouldn't I? And my, my my thought was I'd be the king. I didn't think it would actually work, but I was like, I want to give it a shot, you know. Right. And I knew. Uh, so I knew Sturgill Simpson from back from Kentucky. He said I got this producer named Dave Cobb, who probably crazy enough to do this album you're talking about. And I said, I went out, and uh, the true story is I I was my family is from Kentucky and from Nashville. So I was in Nashville as a family mm-hmm. and I went to Dave Cobbs and I'd heard he li- had lived in LA and I hate LA motherfuckers just like you. Yeah, Although I, I do like the Lakers, which we can talk about later. Yeah. That's my team. Um, I saw you like, I saw you like the Lakers. I, I don't know why but I'll tell you, we'll talk about that later, but I saw Dave Cobb and I'd heard he lived in LA and I'm like, I don't know. I, he, I like his records. I like what I've heard, but I'm going to go to his house because he said, come over we'll talk and then we'll grab lunch. And when, and I said, if he takes me to some fancy, because Nashville was starting to get, you know, a little cool, mm-hmm. which I hate the fucking new Nashville driving me up the fucking wall. Anyway, so I, I made a decision. I said, I'm going to meet the dude. If he takes me to some fancy schmancy Nashville, cool, hip lunch place, I'm not doing the record with him. He didn't know this. You and did. I don't think I've ever told him this story. So he's, um, we were talking for a few minutes. He showed me around his home studio and he goes, so you want to grab lunch? I go, cool. Yeah. I go, where do you want to eat? He goes, well, there's a waffle house around the corner. And I just said, we're to him right there. I said, you got the gig. <laughs> Let's fucking go. What, so how, how important is authenticity to you? I mean, what else is there? Right. But it, I mean, is there anything else? No, I, but like, why, but like this music industry is so unauthentic <laughs> right now in 2022 to, to try to be authentic in a world of, people just being so fucking fake. It's just, it's harder than it ever was. Like what makes you still want to yeah, play there's, music? There's, um, there's nights I think about it myself, man. I mean, when I, when I look up at, you know, this Wheeler movement of crowds I'm seeing, we just, we played to, you know, we're playing to probably 2000 people a night, which is so sick, not, not arenas, but it's still crazy to me. Them because many to get that many people in, you know, these small towns, especially because I try not to play the big, too much of the big cities because I fucking hate them. Mm-hmm. But seeing what I'm seeing, I think people are just dying for something that, that you know, I'll, I'll scream out to the crowd, fuck corporate country, fuck the radio and all these. I got Wheeler's got a very specific audience, which is people who don't. The majority of people, especially in America, I don't know the rest of the world. I don't go there. I don't like it. But in America. People just open their mouth and they feed the bullshit that they're given. Mm-hmm. Netflix shoves shits down your throat. All these other fucking whoever it is, Spotify, they just, and people just gobble this shit up. So the people, that's why people come to me a lot, you know, like Netflix or who's a new on Paramount Plus. They want to, they want, they come to me, they want to do a Wheeler movie. And I always tell them go. F-, and they, and then it usually leads to one of two things. One is 
they want to tell me how to do it. And I say, fuck off. Or number two, they go, we'd also like to own your music. And then I tell them to fuck off. What they're trying to do is I have a very specific audience and my fans don't take bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that's the last, that is the last audience that, for example, Netflix can't get that audience because Netflix's job is to feed bullshit down people's throats. They got those algorithms. They got those things of like, this show sucks. We know it sucks, but we spent $10 million on on it. So we're just going to feed it to you. You don't even know you're getting it. You just click on the Netflix button and we're going to shove it down your fucking throat. And I just, I feel like what they're really trying to do, like I said, Netflix offered me something recently. I told them to go fuck their mothers. Mm -hmm. Um, What they're really (laughs) trying to do is they're, they're trying to buy my fans. Right. So I'll get the check. But what I'm selling them is my fans. And I don't want to sell my fans to them. Right. Because they're too loyal to me. They, they, they stream and buy my shit and my T-shirts and shit. I'm not going to sell them out like that. Yeah. And if then the deal ever came. If the deal ever came along, that was right. I'd probably do it, you know. But they what the, but they're do, the way they're, do, they're going. They don't know. I don't think they understand. Here's what I would tell any young artist, period, is the power of no, you would not believe this shit. I've said no to, I mean, I've said no to everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm you know, honored to play this big fest, big festival, play this. You could open up for this big artist. You can do all this shit, but you got to do this. Well, fuck you. Right. I'm, I think about these people, like these musicians who just like, just get fucked up the ass so hard by these record labels just to get famous. Well, here's, here's the, you know, here's another, like all to give some more uh, advice to people. Go on. Do you like uh, Underground Kings? Yes. Hip hop group. Mm-hmm. Uh, go, go. If you're a young musician, go uh, Google Bun B interview. Bun B is one of the guys from Underground Kings and he goes through everything. He's a he's a fucking expert. I want to meet him one of these days. I think he's Houston based, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're playing Houston, but he just like, you just got to know you got to You got to be smart. You, you know, he's t- someone was asking him about how the major labels fuck you. He goes, well, don't sign with a major label. You know, you got to be. F- and I had major label offers for my first record. Really? And I knew and I knew I did not want to do the things they were going to ask me to do. And I knew I would. If the album was successful. I kick my fucking own ass. If I didn't. Um, do it yourself. Oh, oh did, 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 I didn't own my I want to own my masters. I want to own all my shit. I don't want a boss. People. Here's the thing. Here's what I don't understand about young musicians, especially. You get into, why do you get into music? Because you don't want to work. Right. Right? Right. Exactly. So why are you going to... So the so first thing they do is they offer... A record company offers you a deal, and these, they, they fucking sign it. So you spend your whole life not wanting to have a boss, not go to work, and then, they, and then a big corporation comes up to you, and you fucking sign the contract. Mm-hmm. You just signed up for a boss. Right. Well, that's what you thought you were playing music, so you wouldn't have to work. Right. No, now you got a boss who tells you what to do. You know what? I got because I own my shit and I do all my own shit. Um, we got these offers for. Um, I'll give. I don't know an example. We're pl- to play uh, Colorado in two weeks. Oh man, that's my that's my wedding anniversary, or or that's my that's a buddy of mine's having a bachelor party. Mm-hmm. Well, on a major label, you can't say no. They tell you what to do. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Fuck you. I'm not playing the gigs. Reschedule. Yeah. These guys, you're on a major label. You got a boss. I don't want a fucking boss. I do this so I don't have a fucking boss. If you sign with a major label, you're a little bitch with a boss. Right. What about, you know, or like, you know, like, man, I fuck the man. Fuck the man. Warner Brothers Records deal. Sign. Shut the fuck up. You love the man. You're with Warner <laughs> Brothers Records. You fucking suck the man's dick. You're Warner right. Brothers Records is Time Warner. That's CNN. That's Time Magazine. Shut the fuck up. Stop telling me you're fucking punk rock that you're fuck the man. You're on Warner Brothers Records. Right. Shut the fuck up. Do you feel the same walk way about the pro- walk. Do you think you do you feel the same way about promoting your music on social media of where these people are where these these sites are owned by these big ass companies too? Uh I do. Um I, that's that's why I kind of moved it over. I I have a new deal, which is I think social media is is the devil's work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's evil, and so I personally am not on it. I'm right. I take a I'll grab a picture and I'll write a post and I'll text it to my manager. Post this, or I'll make a video and I'll send it to my manager. 
he, he does all the posting. I don't have my passwords. I know, I know that might piss some people off that might say my social media is inauthentic. It does come from me, but you know, and it's also weird for an artist to tell his fans to get off social media, but I do think it is, yeah. it's an evil thing. Mm-hmm. And I think if you, and it's, like, and it's also, you know, a bite in the hand that feeds for a guy who's for reasons unknown has gotten pretty big off like TikTok, right. which I, I, my first, I had a song get big on TikTok before I knew what TikTok was, you know. What song but was that? Drop Mal got really big on TikTok a couple of years ago. No and, my, and they're like, they got a, I got a call from one of my, one of my people saying, uh, you know, your drop mouth's blown up on TikTok. My response was, what's TikTok? I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And now that I know, I wish I didn't know because it's just fucking stupid. But, you know, it helps pay the bills. So yeah. gets people off to shows, I guess. I mean, it's, 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 is it a necessary evil? Is it, am I being um, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, 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 uh, it's a little early for me. It's only noon here. So yeah. I'm, I'm losing the, forgetting the word. Being a hypocrite by saying, fuck the major labels, but social media is good or does some good. Yes, I am. And I know it. Yeah. But I personally don't fuck with social media. Yeah. Because it, it kind of feels like the same concept where it's like, uh, they're just force feeding you happiness. And maybe some days we don't feel like we need to be fucking happy. Maybe someday. But, here, but here's but, but here's where I will give someone credit. It by, I'll go back to what is the thing I hate the most? I hate having a boss. Mm-hmm. So if you can build your own audience, own your own masters, be your own boss, and get the word out there through your social media account, then I think that's probably, if you're a young kid doing that, I think that's probably cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm seeing some of this shit, you know, most of, first of all, most of those big social media accounts are just are fake mm-hmm. numbers anyway. Same right. thing that the way Spotify algorithms feed shit bullshit down your throat. It's the same kind of thing, you know. Do that many people really? Do those people have that many followers? No, they're mostly bought and paid for. So. Right. Yeah, like it's so uh, fucked up. Like nothing is real anymore. Just like, what does Sturgill Simpson teach you? What did like Sturgill teach you about songwriting and authenticity? Uh, he didn't teach me a lot personally. He taught me a lot by doing, I mean, I would do interviews and he would, I would just see a text, like, don't talk to that guy again, you know? Yeah. Like he's go back and read some of his articles yeah. and see how he's sucks corporate dick. I mean, those aren't exact words, but basically what he's saying, or he would just right. say, you know, and and also I would say too, just again, it's not, it wasn't personally from him, but like, I heard stories about shit he would turn down, you know, sponsorships and shit he would turn down. You know, I, I'll, I'm dying for like Budweiser to sponsor my tour yeah. just because uh, no one sells more Budweiser than me. Yeah, but, I heard you're the record. You know, they don't. Yeah, I, uh, but I don't do it. You know, I haven't gotten the offer yet, but I heard he, how many times he's turned that shit down, you know. It's fucking insane. I mean, what about Paul Cawthon? You know him? I do know him. He just texted me. Yes, actually, I won't read it. That's one of my um, close buddies. Oh, cool. Yeah, he uh, texted me. He sometimes texts me song titles. Yeah, but but he but I he yeah I think he'd be embarrassed if I read him. Yeah, 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 no, no. Paul's Paul's brilliant. He's I think he's you know when you think of authenticity, I think he's another guy who uh, who is pretty authentic. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't talked to him in a bit. But like I said, every once in a while, I'll just get some, some dirty words pop up on my phone, and I'll see it. And um, I'll know it's him pitching me a song time. Do you just walk around Nashville and just look at people and just like be angry? Like, this is my city now? I think that's putting it mildly. I was just talking to my wife about it, who, by the way, is downstairs with COVID. I don't know how she got it and I didn't. I just, she just got a positive. I just, that's her second time. And we both got it together. Sorry, I'm off topic. It's okay. We both got together nine months ago, both got COVID, and then we just go on tour. They're like, how you go out on tour without getting COVID? Well, we did. And now I'm feeling kind of shitty. I guess it's coming. Maybe it's maybe it's about to hit me. We'll find out. Mm-hmm. But she just I just got a text from her downstairs. Sorry if I'm coughing. Um, but yes, me and my wife talk about all the time, like 
where the fuck do like I want you and I want why I said I would take that fucking Budweiser sponsorship. I need a fucking island. I need to buy my own fucking island because I can't because we we both go fuck this new Nashville. We fucking hate this place. But where are we going to go? Right. You know, like we don't like. I mean, everywhere you go is fucking dipshit New Yorkers with their stupid sparkly cowboy hats on. Just walking around with a beer in their hand, looking for a fucking Uber. He's fucking ass. I f- I f- fuck every tourist, every asshole from LA and New York who's moved here. I'll, I'm going to find you and kick all your fucking asses. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, like, it's, just, it's just turning into LA. Think, it's, 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 it's like, it's like uh, it, this whole town is like a fucking, it's like a redneck costume party. <laughs> it's, 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 it's fucking sick. It makes me want to fucking barf. And so, I see why. I'll, it's funny, and I'm seeing it more and more. Like every every day, I'll reach out to a buddy of mine, you know, uh, a country musician. I don't like to name country musicians' names because just me mentioning their name could get them canceled. Right. Just saying their name, but every day I'll be like, "Hey, man, what you been up to? You want to, you know, grab a drink?" They're like, "Oh no, I moved to Florida, or I moved to Georgia. Yeah. Fuck Nashville." I'm like, "How do you just fucking, you know?" I think everyone saw COVID. Majority of the world saw COVID as a way to move to Nashville. The Nashvillians saw COVID as a way to get out. Right. What What about... I, want to I know, don't know that I could handle it much longer. I know. So if you could pick an island in any part of the world, where would it be? Um, someplace with nice weather and water. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. So, you, But you said you're from L.A. and you live in Denver? I, I'm from L.A., um, I love, uh, you know, the only thing I like about LA was, is the Lakers and I'm a diehard Laker fan. I go to, I tried to go to a bunch of the games, but like now I see this in your concept with that is the same concept I see in sports now with all these, these fucking prima donna athletes who don't work anymore and they're getting paid crazy amount of money and they don't even try anymore. It's bullshit. Yeah, and I felt that too when I started seeing college. It was bumming me out because I'm obviously, obviously I'm a big University of Kentucky fan. I felt like, why am I watching these like a an 18 year old kid just waiting for his multi million dollar check, right. waiting out his one and done year at Kentucky? It became kind of boring to watch. Just like, and, I, and again, I don't not get it. You tell me that um, to play basketball for a year. And I'll make fifty million dollars if I don't get injured. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see me at my best, right? Um, and bums me out about Anthony Davis because right. I saw him play in person, and I'm just like, man, this guy's going to be killer, and he can't seem to stay fucking healthy. Yeah, I think it's also these. You know, it's like he was a point guard when he was in, like, you know, he was raised a point guard, then he grew to seven feet, and you know, you you can't be. Well, that's that's what I said. That's what I said when I saw him. I was like, that's a that's like if Hakeem Elijah wanted to be a point guard. I right. go, I've never seen a player like this. Mm-hmm. But I think he's so lanky that maybe that that hurts him staying healthy. But like, shouldn't there be some kind of rule? Like, if I don't play a concert, I got to cancel and I got to give him the money back. Right. It's like, how do you get those giant checks if you're injured? I right. get it that it's not your fault if you're injured, but yeah, are you are you watching the finals? I am. I'm going to Game Three tomorrow. I'm wearing a, Where? um in Boston. I'm I'm wearing a Lakers. From Denver, huh? Yeah, I'm flying out. I'm wearing a Lakers Jason Tatum. How'd you get jersey. tickets, man? Am I talking to like a, a hot high roller? <laughs> you know, I'm like I'm in the jam scene, so no one knows who the fuck I am. But I, I sneak into these games. <laughs> so it's all good. okay. Cool. Yeah, I was kind of hoping. Uh, I was vo- I was rooting for the. First of all, they do. I will I'll, for all the shit I say. I would love a team in Nashville, but they're not going to have one because they got one in Memphis. They ain't going to have two Tennessee teams, right? I'd love, but I would have loved. I thought Memphis was pretty good. I was hoping they'd get there. Yeah. And then after they lost, I was I really like uh, Jimmy Butler. I was hoping Miami would make it. Yeah. So I don't really have any skin in the game now. It seems like you like the guys with grit who fucking work hard. Like, what's your take on work ethic in 2022? I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen so many. I finally got a band of people. You'd be surprised. Cause I always thought like I treat my band well. That they, you know, I've always gotten them. You know what I thought was good shit, and 
I treated him as well as any band member had. And I got this, all these, every artist in town was warning me. These musicians are prima donnas. I finally got a band now of people who actually said they appreciate the gig. I'd never heard that before. Right. Like everyone before was just like, you should be so lucky you have me. No, motherfucker. Look at the fucking marquee. Wheeler Walker Jr. I don't see your name on there. <laughs> Why don't we do a survey and see how many people are here for the fucking guitar player? You should be bla- get, glad you got $5. <laughs> what, so what is you that? What? But that's that Nashville shit, bro. That's that LA shit. That's that New York. Like, I feel like I just, it's like this uh, entitlement just because I'm a good There's, musician in what's, the city. What's, what's weird is it, I, dude, I've had this talk a million times. Where does this fucking entitlement come from? I don't know. I mean, the, most of the people I take, I take out on these gigs, they, I'm like, like I said, it ain't the fucking Staples Center, but two thousand people. I saw you last night play for ten people. Yeah. Where is this entitlement coming from? Right. Where do you think you were? Were did you were you secretly in Guns and Roses and didn't tell me? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's also, it's like these music school kids who, who have these teachers kiss their fucking ass without them even doing it. Oh shit. Oh shit. Don't, now you're getting me started. So there's this college here called Belmont, yeah, which is like a religious, a religious music school. And they're, I think part of the corporatization of Nashville is the fault of Belmont, which is, and not even so Belmont as the Belmont attitude, which is Belmont is a very expensive school. You can base, basically nowadays you can pay your way into country music. You know, if you if you if you're if if mommy and daddy have the money to send you to Belmont, Belmont will introduce you to the big wigs of country music. Right. Which means, which means what I just said. Which means you can, mommy and daddy can pay your way into country music. Half the people you're hearing on the radio are people that mommy and daddy paid for. Yeah, and I saw that with. And, that- with the new country hall of fame too, where they have these, the new artists, it looked like they all paid to get into the country hall of fame a little bit. Did you have you seen oh, they this? They probably did. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fucking insane. But continue, continue. No, but I, I, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say, but what I just said, which is that it's just, it's this new, there's a lot of entitlement in all. I feel like in just everybody's work ethic in general. I mean, like when I was a kid, didn't, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to compare ages, but we seem around the same age that we're not kids. Right. When I was a kid, it was like, you knew you were going to be in a van for 20 years before you ever got even yeah. uh, out of debt. Totally. But now these people, these, all these, these kids I meet nowadays, they just, they want to be fucking famous and rich immediately. Do you, do you they blame, want shortcuts. Do you blame the ADD culture? And, and I do. And I also blame social media. They're just swiping and seeing these jets and these fucking, you know, and private planes and those decked out tour buses. They think they're owed that. And mm-hmm. they, they, what they, the problem is no one really posts um, sprinter vans and sleeping in the hostel or sleeping in right. a motel six. It's just, it's just, everyone wants to pretend they're someone they're not on social media, but so no one gets to see the dirty work, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like the same thing as everyone's not promoting their sadness. They're only promoting their happiness. When that just- Yeah, I mean, like, I, just, I, I played a theater in um, in uh, Kansas City this past weekend. Uh, what, Midtown? Really cool theater, Uptown. Or Uptown Theater? Uptown Theater. That's yeah, a great theater. And, um, yeah, killer theater. And there was, like, I met a, a guy there who said he saw Metallica there 20 years ago. Like- it takes 20 years to go from the Uptown Theater to where Metallica is right now. People, nobody, but I mean, that generation, they'll wait their 20 years. Right. I feel like these kids are going to get pissed if they don't go from the Uptown Theater to the Nissan Stadium in a fucking week. Right. Have you always been patient? You know, your whole life? Um, it depends on what I'm patient in my work. I'm not patient with, I just don't have time for the people, kind of people we're talking about. I don't uh-huh. have patience for idiots and assholes. Right. Especially as they get older, you know, people tell me, you know, we got this, we want you to do this run in Texas, but you're not going to get paid much. Fuck you. I don't want to go to Texas and look for fucking 80 bucks. Right. It's fucking like, you've been to Houston in the summer? It's the worst. Fun? No, it doesn't. Yeah. I'm not going to Texas. And, I'm not going to Houston in August. Shut no. the fuck up. Right. Well, I know the money's not great, but you'll get exposure. I don't want fucking exposure in Houston. Right. I want to sit at fucking home. Yeah. 
Is a it, lot of good movies on, on my TV. As you get older, you know, you talk about this 20-year work ethic thing. In the beginning years of Wheeler Walker Jr., like, would you take all those bullshit exposure gigs? Or have you always put your foot down about this philosophy? No, it's it's a new it's a newer thing because when you're ever I get that's why I guess I get I have a little bit of sympathy. I get being young and dumb and taking any gig you can get. Right. But that's work ethic. I just felt at that age I had to work. Mm-hmm. You know. So when like did it you... just takes a lot it takes a lot of fucking work. I mean, you know, when I do it I do it my albums are all have all been eleven songs. Mm-hmm. I'll write 150 songs to get the best eleven songs. What? So well, it, but my but my albums are good. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but like the dudes who write eleven songs to get eleven songs, I don't want to hear the record. You know. Yeah. Actually, I do hear the records and their shit. You know, when you're writing 150 songs for a record, how do you pick the best eleven? What's your philosophy? Well, that's mainly it's it's Cobb and I, Dave Cobb and I, kind of choosing the best ones and kind of. They've also got they've got a flow together too, and you know they got. My thing too is he's. If I'm going to pay Dave Dave Cobb, who is expensive, is, is the best producer, country music producer out there. I don't want to pay him and not listen to him. It'd be stupid. Right. That's where you just go. I'll just, and I don't think he'd be pissed if I produced it myself. But um, if I, uh, if I'm if I'm paying him someone at that level to produce my album, I want I'm paying him. I better listen to his opinion. If that makes sense, totally. Like I don't if he says. I want to record this song. If it, even if it's not my favorite song, it means he's got a vision for it. And I want to hear his vision. Right. You, you know, know he's got, he thinks he can do something good with it. Yeah. And what has he taught you about songwriting and producing throughout the records you've done with him? I think he's just kind of taught me back to what we were talking about. Authenticity talked to me and uh, taught me about of more. It's just, it's not about getting it perfect. It's just a vibe. We, I don't know. People don't really know this, but we record live. The albums you're hearing are just like, I, I'm a huge Bob Dylan fan and um, I like his bootleg stuff. And you'll just, what he does on his, a lot of his bootleg stuff. He'll just like um, highway 61. He'll, he'll, the bootleg has got like the 50 outtakes, but, but there was something about the take he chose that just had the right feel and the right vibe. So all, kind of cop taught me, which isn't that complicated, but I'm glad I learned it, which is a bunch of good musicians in a room playing a great song. Just keep playing it. Not all day. You're getting sick of it, but do, a, do a bunch of takes, pick the best one. That's all it is. It's just, it ain't rocket science. And nowadays when people are, do, are just building it on a fucking, on a, what's the program? Pro tools. On pro tools. It's just like, we're just listening to computer sounds. I don't like that. I want to hear people in a room playing. Yeah. And when the guitarist hits a cool note and the bassist goes like, damn, and plays a little harder, I want to hear it on the record. And the best example, I'll give, do you mind if I give you an example? Of course. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No. So one of my, I think my, my biggest stream song, my most stream song is probably Fuck You Bitch. Yeah. And um, we recorded Fuck You Bitch. And I was listening to, and um, I was playing acoustic and singing. And um, we were listening to playback. And uh, he put the wrong microphone up or his engineer had. Uh So the acoustic was bleeding into the vocal mic. And I asked, I said, can you turn the acoustic guitar down? And he goes, no, we can't because the acoustic's in the vocal mic. I go, shit. My my immediate thought was, shit, we got to record it again. And Cobb goes, no, that's the best. That's the great. That's a killer take. Don't record it again. Because he just had the feel. No one's no one listens to a song and goes, man, the acoustics up too loud. Right. Just he said, just roll with it. It's good. Right. I mean, any other producer in the world, myself included, at that time would have just said, let's re-record it. But he knew that was the take, and he was right. It, like when you cannot, and people don't come up to me at shows and go, man, fuck you, bitch. The acoustics too loud. You know, <laughs> they care about the feel and the vibe of the song. You know. So why do we get in our head? Why do we get in our heads when we're in the studio? And because is it. We're, we're costing a lot. It, why, what I'm asking is, why do we get in our heads and overthink when we're in the studio, but we're not overthinking when we're writing the songs? Well, that's, I think that's what a good, nowadays, what a good producer does, especially that's where another thing I'll give Cobb credit for is he's good at making you relaxed, 
and making it just feel like you're hanging out with your friends sitting around um and just playing he and he's kind of the mat it's it's almost therapy more than producing kind of, honestly yeah. i mean obviously anyone's going to get freak out if all you're thinking about is money but you got that's kind of down to you and your therapist talking if you <laughs> if all you're thinking about in the studio is how much you're spending you're never going to win that one do you go to therapy i do not but i need to what why do you think you need to because i'm a, look at me i'm a fucking have you heard my songs <laughs> I'll clap to that. <laughs> Let's go. What, what, are the th- what are the things you don't like about Dave Cobb's productions? I don't think there's anything. I, I mean, I guess the only, it's like any producer, like, it's just taste. I mean, Rick Rubin's a producer I love. I love his stuff with Tom Petty. I love his stuff with Run DMC. He's certainly done albums I don't lo- love. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing about his production cause production i don't like i just but i wouldn't say it's not up to the producer there's no producers just like i love i don't love albums because of the producer sometimes the producer will go will make me want to listen to an album i may not otherwise you know Mm -hmm. like if like if Cobb was producing florida georgia line i might listen to it Uh like why the fuck did he do this maybe he had a reason but he probably i in that instance, the reason would probably be a new house, but uh-huh. <laughs> uh, although he hasn't done that, like I said, but there's nothing I don't like about his producing. Um, so what, what would you do if like, say a Florida Georgia line or a Blake Shelton said, Hey Wheeler, I would like you to open for a tour. Would you take it? Fuck no. Why not? Because the, the money I would make from that tour would cost me every single fan that I had. Yeah, that's true. That's actually true. And you know what? Why? Why would I? Do, why would I ever even consider that? Yeah, that's true. Actually, what about your brother? What does he think of this? Um, I don't really talk to him about it. No, you don't really talk about it. No, I don't. Talk, yeah, I don't. I try to keep this shit. I keep my family out of it. You know, that's good though. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to drag them down with me. <laughs> well, Listen, what if and they got their, they got their own shit. Yeah. I feel that. It, how hard is it not to keep uh, your family out of this world? It's really not that hard. I mean, I see so many other people on social media showing off their whole fucking family. I just don't really get it. You yeah. know, yeah. like, I'm sure your cousin's cool, but I don't give a fuck about your fucking cousin, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, unless he's like, unless it's like ACDC where your brother's in the band, I don't give a fuck. You know? right. right. I don't listen to, I'm trying to think of a band I love. I don't listen to um, uh, Nirvana because I love their family members. I like the, the band, you know? Yeah. What would be a dream tour for Wheeler Walker Jr.? Huh. God damn, that's a pretty good question. Because we always go, um, you know, my people always go, well, who would you open? Because after we get, after I've turned down the 50th uh, tour opportunity I've had, they go, well, who would you open up for? And the last answer I've given them that I think they laughed me out of the room was, I said I'd open up for Guns N' Roses. That would be sick, actually. Why'd they laugh you out of the room? That sounds like a nice one. Um. I think they just thought it wouldn't happen and they're mm-hmm. probably not wrong, but, um, but that's an example of, a, of an artist I would open for. What about dead or alive? What about dead or alive? Who would, what would be your dream tour to open for? Dead or alive. Well, that opens it up to a whole lot. Um, I mean, any of the old school guys, probably the early, I guess Elvis would have to be number one. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, I I don't think the colonel would like that for his image, but um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, James Brown, I'd fucking go rub for Michael Jackson. Yeah, what I do keep you like? my kids away, but I but I but I, but I, <laughs> but I open up Michael Jackson. What do you like? What do you like about Chuck Berry, and what 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 do you see in them that you love their art form? I just, the, there's an excitement to it, you know, it's yeah. just like, they're just, it's like probably what 
again, I'm trying to try to think of an example that the kids would understand, like the the day Steve Jobs and figured out the iPhone or something, yeah. you know, it's like they're figuring, they're inventing something, you know, yeah. and you hear it in their music and like, he was the first guy to do it. So it's like Chuck Berry wrote all the great rock and roll songs, little Richard too. Same thing. There's, you just hear the excitement of just like, we're on to something new. Yeah. Yeah. So with that philosophy, what's your take on these uh, Nashville songwriter rooms where there's like four guys in a songwriting room every two hours putting out, cookie cutter songs well again it's just it's the corporatization of nashville it's just if you i would i would i think what they're doing is bullshit i think that's a bullshit way to create music because that's just turning it into i mean do you are you really going to get emotional and uh, like a really raw song from four fucking dipshit dudes from belmont sitting in a room together down on music <laughs> row Drinking fucking ice lattes and shit. Yeah. You know, so it's half their fault, also half the fault of the dipshit audience that listens to that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it, but like my opinion of it is, is that it's fucking stupid. Sit in a room with your guitar, you got something to say, figure out how to write it. You know, do you have, do you work with songwriters? I have before, but it's, it's only if, Someone will reach out to my people or to me directly like, hey, man, I want to write with you. And mm-hmm. someone I lo- if it's someone I dig their songs, I'd be like, oh, I'd like to take a piece of that. Sure. Have you, you ever- know, I mean, I'm not against songwriting c- collaborations, but, you know, you know, my favorite songs are probably co-writes, Lennon McCartney, uh, all the old stuff. I mean, but at the end of the day, my favorite songs are probably songs that are just written by one person. It's, yeah. un, it's unfiltered, you know? Yeah. And it's not a bounce back. It's like the true emotion. It's authenticity. It's yeah, going- yeah, and, you, and you don't get, and you don't get someone question, you know, like, <coughs> sorry, my COVID's coming in. Uh, yeah. You don't get, if you are online at the top of your head, you don't have someone going second guessing. I don't, I got enough problems as it is. I don't need some dipshit on music row telling me rethink that line, you know? Yeah. What's your take on finding a good manager for musicians? Because you feel like you told me about like uh, working for somebody. Do you feel like a manager is someone that works for you or do you work for them? No, they 100% work for me. And and I remind them that every fucking day. I mean, I think that's kind of the point is you find someone who works for you. Get this done, get that done. There's a lot of, t- I don't think people know this, but going to Kansas City and playing the Uptown Theater, you can't just get on a off a plane and just play the show. I hate to say it, but there's a lot of shit and sell t-shirts, do all that shit, a lot of shit that goes into it. So find a guy, just someone you get along with, um, who can just work ethic back to what you said, just, you know, wants to bust his ass to help you grow. And I don't think you need to say to him at the meeting, like, just don't just remember you work for me. It's not something I remind him of every day, but it's something (laughs) That's pretty well established. Yeah, but like... There's a reason. Go ahead. I feel like a lot of new bands, they sign these big to these big management companies or these big booking agencies and they lose their voice. They become soft. Yeah, I think... I would... I would... I would strongly encourage someone not to sign with a big, man, a big time manager or agency just because you're going to get fucking lost, you know? Right. Why, if you have the same manager as Garth Brooks, there ain't nobody picking up your phone calls. You know. <laughs> you know. They, what do they make? Ten percent. Yeah. It's like you'll never. In the if you work, if I work from now to the rest of my life, I'm never going to make what an agent makes on one Garth Brooks show. Yeah. So why would he pick up my call? And why? Would, and then in that case, it's my fault for signing with them. You know. Yeah. What's your take on cancel culture? Well, it depends on who you're talking. I think in general it's stupid, but also like Bill Cosby should be canceled. Right. Harvey Weinstein should be canceled. I think there's some on the edge. I think it's just dangerous to even like. My personal thing is I'm I'm dying to be canceled. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you know, we sell cancel Wheeler shirts at the show. Really? 
Yeah, and I'm encouraging it. I think it's I think it's good for business. Yeah. But I don't think that like um I think people again, I think pe- this whole don't you feel like society's just in a fucking mess right now? Yeah. Everyone's just a fucking idiot. Is it confused? But like I feel like people people are so like I don't like the idea that you can't make mistakes or you can't apologize and understand your mistakes. I just don't understand that. People make mistakes every fucking day. Yeah. I've never, you know, like if you make a mistake, you should have a chance to apologize. And I get there's extremes. Bill Cosby, an apology ain't going to fucking do it. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, canceling Bill Cosby. Why doesn't every fucking person who worked for him for the last 50 years, why aren't they all canceled too? Ooh, yeah. All those executives all, who helped, you can't do what he did by himself. Right. So every fucking person at every agency, at every studio exec, every fucking person who worked on that fucking show who watched him go backstage and take these young women with him, they should all be canceled too. Right. Take them all down. It shouldn't be just the guy. They're yeah. just as guilty and they're all probably still working and making big checks. Yeah. So it's, it's more of like, well, that's a, it's, it goes back to fucking social media where like everyone doesn't, can't apologize because everyone has to live this fucking fake ass life and it's fucking bullshit, Wheeler. And I'm with you, man. I don't think it's cool. I mean, I kind of, I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this podcast, but I, I dig you. And I can I say that. Yeah. I thanks, like where man. you're coming from. I appreciate it, man. I like your vibe. It means a lot I, um, because like I think about this, I worry about this too. Cause I have songs like blame it on the pussy I've had. And like, I, I go on stage and get, I go and get naked on stage and I do wild shit and everyone's like, he's you like get naked on stage. Yeah. Sometimes so you must, you must be, you must be, you must be proud of your dick. No, I'm small. I'm Jewish, bro. I got nothing, but I'm just, I'm just um, confident with myself. You know, I'm not, I don't care. I don't, I'm not worried about these fucking trolls trying to get after me. Well, I did try to yell at a troll yesterday. And I, what's your take on trolls? Actually, do you yell back at these trolls? Or you just tell them to fuck off. No, well, in in person or so so that's the reason that cuz kind of the reason I got on social media, off social media personally was like it's just a num way I look at it, it's just a numbers game, right? Right. Like when I was getting I don't know. We just started. I was getting a hundred streams a week the first when I when I first started. I'm just throwing out random numbers. Right. Now that I'm getting millions of streams a week, the numbers of trolls just go up. If you're not, if you're, you can't be successful without trolls. It's just part of it. Yeah. So I just, I just try to. What they want is you to respond, and I don't feel like if someone says I suck. Good. Stay in your basement and, and suck your mom's pussy. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but like, let's go. But, it, but if you're in your, if you're in your basement making fun of me, I just don't, I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, well, there's a million people who dig it. Right. So every, every million new fans you're going to get, you're probably going to get a thousand haters. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta, you, if you want fans, you gotta embrace the hate too. Yeah. How long did it take you to embrace the hate? Um, it never really bothered me. Like I always make a joke, which is not really a joke that my, like my audience, like on Amazon or iTunes, my review is, uh, my average, they give you the average review, what the customers think about your album. Right. And it's always exactly three because there's always exactly enough five-star reviews and they don't let you do zero. The the lowest they can do is one, Uh which averages out. So hold on, let me do the math for a second. A five out of five and a one out of five. That's six out of 10, right? right. So that's a three. Right. So my re- the fan reviews of my album on average are three mm-hmm. because every person who says they love it, there's a person who says they hate it because the haters are always loud. A hater is going to write a shitty review faster than, because who, by the way, what kind of dipshit goes on iTunes and reviews an album? Oh, what happened yeah. to your life? It's like it's well it's the it's the same as the fucking Yelp reviewers. Some bullshit. Yeah, I remember I remember we were in a a small town recently. I don't want to name the name because it was a, kind of a shithole, but we were like, what's the best reviewed restaurant in this town? We look it up, it said fucking Panera. And we're aye, like, aye, aye. so well, like, so I guess we gotta go check out this fucking gr- grand restaurant that everyone's talking about. Right. 
Is that the problem like, with America? Is like we have no uh, taste anymore. <laughs> We're just bland. Well, I, I think I think part of it too is like with the Twitter thing. It was like you know, wouldn't this be nice if everyone had an equal voice? No, it wouldn't. Because there's too many fucking idiots. You're right. You know? You're fucking right. How like, do we get so some, dumb? There's, 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 I'm, I'm a fucking genius. There mm-hmm. shouldn't, I shouldn't have an equal voice. The same, the same voice as a fucking idiot. Right. Like the guy who throws a, a plastic cup at my guitar player at a show. He shouldn't have a voice. Right. Have you ever had any shit like that where the, one guy just was, oh, was, was angry at what you said or maybe you talk shit to him on stage and then he tried to fight you on stage? Yeah, I used to well, I used to try I used to get real pissed on stage and now I just kind of I just keep playing. I just I don't want to let him ruin you know, these fans, and especially with the economy nowadays, these pay, fans pay I keep my ticket prices low, but still thirty bucks a lot of money to a lot of these people, especially yeah. they're buying a t shirt, getting a babysitter and shit. I don't want one dipshit to ruin their night. So I used to get pissed. But that was when my emotion would take control. Now I just be like, I'm not letting your di- what you're going through and the fact that your wife let left you and that you can't get it up ruin the show for everybody else. <laughs> you know, it's not my fault. What was the worst I blow get, up? I played a festival with uh, Sturgill and Tyler Childers years ago where I got hit in the chest with a full be- can of beer and I fucking lost it, man. What'd you do? But I wouldn't even... Oh, I, I went on social media after the show and threatened to sue the fucking <laughs> festival whole the fucking I went crazy. Oh my God. Did you find that guy? Did you find who threw it or just it was just you were in the moment? Um, I didn't find I mean, I've done that before where like I'm not playing I just that's again where I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on the fans, not the haters, but I did do that shit before where I'm not playing another note till we find the guy right. and then kick him out. But then it just I stopped doing it. I'm just like there's 99% of the people in here didn't do shit. Why am I punishing them for this dipshit? Because mm-hmm. I don't want to be, if I'm at a Guns N' Roses concert and a dipshit throws something at Axel and he stops playing Sweet Child of Mine, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Right. So I, mean, I don't try to punish the audience for, there's a dipshit. I mean, there's like every audience, I mean, there's dipshits in every crowd. Coldplay's guys made dipshits as I do, you know? Yeah, true. What? You think everyone who goes see Coldplay is a fucking, you know, a fucking genius? No. What about what about um titties? You see a lot of titties on show? Um not as much as I used to. I'm starting to see I feel like as the crowds get bigger, it becomes more professional. Right. And it's a not if it's a nice big theater, it becomes a little weirder as as opposed to like a dingy little club. So I would say I'm seeing less. Yeah. But well, and it probably don't bother as the crowds grow, you know, and I'm seeing more. And again, it was I didn't do it on purpose, but as my shit gets bigger on TikTok and more younger ish people are coming out. I don't want to like I saw a kid the other night at a show who was like his mom brought him. I appreciate it, but he's fucking 12. I don't want to. I hope he doesn't. I don't want him whipping out his dick or something. You know? <laughs> It's true, man. I um, you got a couple more minutes for me. Can I ask you a couple more things? Sure. Um, yeah. Tell me about the, what made you go on a hiatus after the previous record. Um, I had, I just was burnt out. I had enough of it. I mean, I was sick of. Um, this is what we were going back to work ethic, mm-hmm. and my thing with people is if. And I've gone to concerts where I've, and you've gone to concerts too, where you've seen the guy and they just look tired. They look defeated and tired. And I'm like, why'd you charge me for the ticket if you didn't feel like giving it your all? And I just was kind of tired, you know? And I was like, I don't want to charge fans to see a show that I don't want to be at. Right. I'm only playing shows if I want to be there. Right. And the shows this run have been, and then I kind of just reevaluate the whole situation, like, you know, Less shows per year, better shows, bigger shows, nicer bus, keep the band comfortable, keep me comfortable, keep my wife comfortable. Let's make this, if we're in a good place, we can put on a good show. Mm -hmm. And I I respect my fans too much to 
you know, to save some money, go get in a van and be tired of shit just to get a paycheck. Right. I want to put on the best show I can fucking play. And I just didn't feel like I could do it. And, and I've seen those things. I've seen so many artists go, you know, that one tour, man, I just didn't feel like doing it, but you know, the money was too good. So I did it. I just don't want to be that guy. Right. I think it hurts you more in the long run. And I was just like, I'm burnt out. The best thing I can do is just take a break. I'll know what I want to do it again. Yeah. And um, there was also some personal shit that I'm not going to get into. Yeah. But I, you know, it's got lost be. some people and it, 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 was, it was some, t- I had some tough times and yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like the roads and shows are supposed to be fun. I wasn't in a fun place. Did you feel like, you and ready? I was like, sorry. And I knew, I knew, I, I knew when I'd be ready. And I was like, I called up Dave and said, I forget when it was, it must have been like a year ago. I said, let's, let's make an album. I say, okay. <laughs> Dave will just say I yes. I fucking love that about Dave. I've had a lot of people put, do records with Dave. And if he loves you, he loves you, man. It's pretty awesome. It's a lot of those yeah, producers. I mean, it's, we're, 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 we're friends before we right. are producer and musician. What, what gave you like the power to finally say no at, and take a hiatus? You know, what was that moment? What, what was the show where you felt like this is, I do, I'm, I'm looking at this crowd right now and I do not give a fuck right now. You remember that show? Well, I, th- I do remember it. And I think it was <sighs> my, my brain says Milwaukee, but I don't know if that's true. It was a Milwaukee, you know, somewhere in the Midwest where I looked out, I wasn't having fun. They weren't having fun. And I felt like a fucking traitor. I felt like, because when you're there and you're not having fun, if they're not having fun, you right. just kind of feel like a thief. Like you're taking their money. Mm-hmm. You're selling them t-shirts. You're selling them beer or the venue selling them beer. Just like, I'm not giving it my all. I want to go home. Right. And I don't want to go to a concert where the guy on stage wants to, I get that the bus sleeping on a bus is not as nice as sleeping in your house, but I don't want to see a guy on stage. You don't want to be there. Yeah. And I made a decision that if I don't want to be there, I'm not going to play the show. Was your, was this uh, during when that, when we're talking about the ungratefulness of your old band, was there, was that part of the band? I would say, no, I don't want to put blame on other people. It was purely me. I yeah. was like, I was You're just tired. Out. I was playing. I was, I wasn't doing your level of touring, but I was doing too many shows. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So now we got it. We got it now to where we can do, 30 ish a year and pay the bills. Yeah. Like, I'd rather do 30 great shows than, no offense to you, but like 250. Yeah. Uh, I'm tired shows. Yeah. And that's what I've, I've definitely, and especially the, the quarantine helped me train my brain to say, hey, there's another life outside of this fucking van. Yeah. You know, what's, you know what's funny is I heard, and I don't know these people, but apparently a lot of these musicians in Nashville, like, um, I'm hearing more and more stories about a get like so and so, and I don't I don't know their names, but so and so guitar player took up coding, and now he's like a computer coder, and he's making twice what he did when he was a guitar player. I'm like, why did it take you quarantine to COVID to figure that out, dude? You should have fucking like you know yeah. what did you need? You should have done that before. If you if you like computers more than guitar, there's nothing wrong with that. Just do it. Maybe he thought it wasn't cool or something. No, it's it goes back to what you said. It's like it's the art of saying no. They never said no and like tested their dreams. Like they were probably force fed fucking music when they were six years old and they had to go to fucking college for music and never really liked it. And now they're stuck in their twenties or thirties and they're like, fuck. I don't I'll never I like think a lot of th- I think a lot of people were like that during COVID. They were just like, dude, I'm 38. It ain't hap, you know. Yeah. There's, there's, mo- there's most rock stars and musicians we knew had a career and were dead by 27. Right. If you're 53, you ain't gonna, you know, right. You ain't gonna have a, a, you know, a, a breakout debut album at 71. Yeah. You know, did you feel you're gonna ever live this long? Yeah, I take pretty good care of myself. I, I kind of cut back on the crazy partying recently. I don't know about you. Yeah, I have too. You kind of you got that kind of party look to you. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I stopped doing the coke and having the one night stands. It helped me a lot. That's cool. Well, that was good. That was a good, that was a smart move. But yeah, you can't do that. He's shit gets, gets kind of old. Also, the other thing, too, people don't tell you is you can't shit on a bus. Yeah. Hot bag know, it. If your audience knows yeah. it. Yeah. Hot yeah bags. If your audience knows this, but yeah. a rough night of drinking. And you're you're stuck on a place where you can't take a shit. That could lead to some fucking dirty problems. Yeah, that, that is insane. Um, now we're getting to the nitty gritty. There it is, and you know, it's like I feel like we're simpatico a little bit with. Um, how did you? Yeah, you plan you, you play in Nashville at all? I'll come check you out. Yeah, man. I'm, I don't even like I don't even like jam bands, but I'll check. I'm you more out. of a songwriter than a jam. I just got forced in the jam world world because I like, crowd surf and party, and you know they like. Hold that. on, I'm trying to. So I'm trying to look. Andy Frasco. Look. But you got like, but you're a solo artist. Yeah, I got a seven piece band. But uh, um, we're and trying to keep rock and roll did, in the jam scene. Andy Frasco in the UN. Yeah, that's me. That's you. Yeah. What's your best album? The um, I think one? the newest wash, one. Wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah, wash, rinse, repeat. Um. So you own your label? I own my own label. Yeah, I, I I'm the same yeah. thing. I can't have a boss. Every time I have a boss, I've been dropped by five record labels. Four booking agencies. Um, yeah, I, I do. I, I do the same thing. Yeah. I can't stand. See, I don't get dropped. I, I fire them. See, but I, but like, yeah. As, as my as my sales and streams start getting big, big labels would come to me, and I'm like, so what are you offering me? You're offering me what I have now, minus seventy percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuck these people. Like, Ugh. like what? It, like, and you, and you, but you're, but what you're offering me is. You know how to manufacture compact discs. Guess yeah. what? I got, I know how to do that too, motherfucker. And you're, nowadays, especially is even worse. It's like, guess what I can do for you? What's that? I can upload your songs to Spotify. Yeah, I have internet connection too, fucking motherfucker. <laughs> what about NFTs? What's your take on NFTs? My take is, if I don't understand it, and I've, it's been explained to me 300 fucking times, I have no interest. Let's fucking go. I was asking a buddy of mine the other day, like, because somebody was asking me about NFTs, like, do I want to get into NFTs? Because they see a guy sell, you know, doing good numbers on streaming. Like, would you be interested in NFTs? I asked my friend, I go, would you? He's like kind of more business savvy. Would you buy an NFT? And his answer was to me was, I don't know. Would you buy Air? <laughs> and I go, I would not buy Air. He goes, well, then don't buy an NFT. <laughs> so if, if I don't want to buy it, I'm not going to sell it. Right. Well, but Again, but I'll ask you for the millionth time, what is it? I don't know either. That's why I'm done with it. I was like, I think it's like the record labels knowing that they can't sell any records anymore. So they're trying to be, it's like that guitar well, player I, trying to be a tech I, guy. Well, the one thing I heard that was cool was there was one band that was doing NFTs and that if you bought the NFT, they had a special merch line that was shorter for the NFT people. Yeah. And that like they would get special release access get songs that the people got like it's but to me isn't that just a fan club or a patreon yeah but like again it's, it's like it's new versions of the same shit yeah well i get but i but i'm saying if it's if you can show it on your phone it makes your life easier i think they this one some artist was doing it where like anyone who bought the nft got into any show for free uh-huh. that's fine but that's like cool. you got to sit down and do the math like the nft costs ten thousand dollars you better be planning on going to 9,500 shows. You know? how, how many times are we going to sell the same fucking bullshit? I don't know. As much technology as we got. I mean, how, how soon till uh, tweets cost money, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or thoughts. Like, did, you hear about, did you hear about that new Elon Musk tw- tweet? No. I'm not telling you. I'm not. No, I'm, I'm saying like, yeah, that's exactly. what it's going to be like. It's yeah. like, I'm not telling you about it. It's 20 bucks if you want to read it. Right. It's like a podcast paying for subscriptions now. Like, um... What's his name? Oh, Dylan. Oh, I forgot his name. God, but a lot of these guys are just... Bob Dylan? <laughs> yeah, Bob Dylan. <laughs> yeah, Bob's got a new podcast called... I'm still yeah, talking. He's got a new po- I heard he got started. He's got a podcast uh, company. <laughs> he's getting into podcasts. Uh, Wheeler, thanks so much, man. I hope we get to connect. I'll be in Nashville June 13th through 16th. I don't know if you're what you're doing, but um, maybe we can I'll catch a beer check my schedule, man. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, man. Very nice to meet you, Wheeler. You seem like you, seem like you got a good uh, handle... You've been through enough bullshit that you kind of that we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, I just think you know it's like I'm never gonna be that fucking pretty polished dude, and I finally realized that in my life, and I feel so much freer 
that I'm just going to be me and fuck everyone else, you know? Yeah. Once you realize, like, again, I'll go back to the Bun B got uh, interview where he goes, someone, asked, which is a rude question. How much money do you make? He goes, how much money? He said, said someone said, well, how much money do you have? He said, enough. Like, yeah. can you pay your, like, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm blessed that I can pay my bills doing this. Right. I don't need a fucking island. I don't need, I made jokes about it, but I don't need a mansion. No. It's enough to live, you know? Yeah. The fans are enjoying the shows. I don't need to, I'm not going to compete. I can't compete with Adele. She's got a billion do- I mean, people don't know that. Ad- I'll bet the record company at best breaks even on Adele. For sure. Because the, mon- how much the tra- money that it cost them, For that it cost sure. them to, to promote that shit and shove that shit down everybody's throat, except hers because she lost all that weight. Yeah. But like, I don't want, I didn't, I can't compete with that shit, nor do I want to. What's your take on Garth Brooks? Well, I used to rip on him a lot, but nowadays, like com- compared to the new shit, he honestly, I gotta say, he sounds like fucking Waylon to me compared to the new shit I'm hearing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's true, man. It's crazy. You ever met Garth or any of those guys? You ever talked no, to him in front of the face? He would, he, he, would, he would never get he would never get near me. No. What about the guys that you're like but really I, adamant about talking shit about, like Blake Shelton or any of those dudes? Have they come up to you yet? Nah, occasionally I'll get like they'll reach out to like somebody on my team, like tell him to knock it off. And I'm like, that's quite a threat. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Wheeler, keep knock me- it off. Yeah. Knock it off. That's what my second grade teacher said. <laughs> hey, knock it off, kid. Wheeler, thanks for yeah. being on the show, bud. Um, I got well, one. Thanks last, for having me, man. It means a lot, man. I got one final question. Um, when it's all said and done, and um, Wheeler is in the abyss of whatever happens after this, what do you want Wheeler Walker Jr. to be remembered by? Uh, there was a guy who didn't give a fuck. Mm hmm. Beautiful. I wish more people didn't didn't give a fuck. You think we'd be happier if stop, we didn't give stop, a fuck? Stop caring so stop caring so much. What? Do you think we'd be happier if we stopped giving a fuck about all the little things? Of course. Yeah. But I've also, but I, I you and I, I guarantee you, we've both been there. Which is like mm-hmm. the fucking they didn't get my rider right, and where's my? This isn't the beer I ordered. Backstage, who gives a fuck? Just yeah. play the fucking show. Yeah. But I've I've learned to not worry about that bullshit. Good. Well, keep doing you, Wheeler, and I'll be here rooting you on, buddy. Cool, man. Thanks for having me, dude. Have a good one, bud. Later. Wheeler Walker. You too. See you. Later.